Thank you for listening. <laughs> I'm gonna switch to my chair, lecturer chair now. Just give me a second. <laughs> Okay, let's start. This is the plan. I'm trying to re do some uh, detour of Lacan's writings with quotations, with a lot of material. I hope we can cover all this today. And it's my hope that you will get a better understanding of the difference with Freud and an idea of what entails Lacanian concept of the body and a crucial point for psychoanalysis, even Jungian, which is the unconscious. To study Lacan is not an easy task. To start, the sources are a problem. If we remain with the translation of his uh, son-in-law, Jack Alan Miller, uh, there is a huge discrepancy between Lacan's uh, of Miller's and the text of Lacanian's seminars we find in other sources. For example, staferla.com is all Lacan in French and it's free. Uh, there are many other seminars. One is Rodriguez Ponte has uh, pro provided us with a lot of his writings with all the things that happened during the seminar. Many of, many of the, that things has been cut from Jacqueline Miller uh, account. Um, I tried to present today a Lacan which is not presented um, by Miller or taught by him. It's one that is not read even by his direct disciples. I'm basing this in uh, a book, Other Lacan by Dr. Alfred Einstein. The point of this work is to raise a case for recovering Lacan as an author and not merely as a commentator of Freud's work. Also to be able to understand, to study Lacan as the creator of a new concept of psychoanalysis with influence on, on philosophy and epistemology. Um, Freud and Lacan, they did not say the same things, even though they used some, some terms similar very few. They belong to two different paradigms. The unconscious, for example, is one that we will study today. Um, according to Thomas Kuhn, the American philosopher of science, um, and if you have questions, please just interrupt me or please ask me to repeat. I will try to go with this slow because it entails some complexity. But according to Kuhn in the 60s, he presented the notion that paradigms, Thomas Kuhn, yes, um, right. Paradigms cannot be compared. One paradigm is unmensurable to another, says Kuhn. For example, the concept of force before and after Newton, that's an idea. The two paradigms, they use the same word, but they're is very different. In my opinion, the current state of affairs in psychoanalytic field is one of confusion in the sense that Lacan exists confound mixed with Freud's legacy. It's surprising that Lacan did not achieve or won recognition by its own merits while other authors such as Klein, and Anna Freud, Winnicott had their places. I'll try to convey that Lacan presents a new paradigm, one that is so different that causes commotion in the world of psychoanalysis. Indeed, Lacan <coughs> was expelled from the International Psychoanalytic Association, his name was erased from all records. And eventually later on his life, Lacan closed his own school. 
And the result was that Lacan writings are somehow dissolved, absorbed into Freudian theories. Even if you never read anything about Freud or Lacan, you will see that they are just by reading the titles, you will see that uh, they are totally different, totally different approach. It's a totally different uh, um, conception by reading the titles. I will read to you some titles. Representation of the unconscious versus signifier. The ego from narcissism in Freud versus the ego from the mirror st stadium. Uh, they are the opposite. Uh, many people said that Lacan is a return to Freud, but maybe we should e expand the knowledge of the word return in French. Retour in French is reversion. It doesn't mean to come back. It implies a 180 degrees. Sometimes is the opposite side. Or Oedipus, for example, versus Oedipus versus the paternal metaphor, or the drive as by biological drives versus Lacan formula of the phantasm. The unconscious as a representation of a thing versus the unconscious as the discourse of the other. The Eve, which is silent in Freud versus that speaks or sa parle in Lacan. The individual in Freud versus the divide subject in Lacan. The list continue, but you can see that the models are not compatible. But because we are talking about models, epistemology, we should address two issues that became myth, myths inside psychoanalytic circles. Uh, one is that psychoanalysis emerges from the clinic, that even the psychoanalyst comes from there, which is to say that psychoanalysis come out of psychoanalysis, which is absurd. The other is the objection to these ideas that I present as they are not psychoanalytic and maybe just philosophical ideas, in, in which this conception assumes that knowledge are independent from each other, which is false. There is a huge literature of reference, but to tell you one, there is a guy, a Serbian mathem mathematician, Vladimir Tasik. Uh, his, his book, A Mathematical Reading of Postmodern Thought, where the Serbian mathematician explains how mathematics powerful influence philosophy. Uh, science influenced philosophy enormously, the principle of uncertainty, for example. Now, Freud created psychoanalysis with a strong influence of, of other fields of knowledge. We were previous to psychoanalysis. His influence and choices were a structure among them, following a pattern of intelligibility. Yes, Vladimir Tasik, right, that one. Um, the structure net refers to fields such as philosophy, epistemology, and supporting sciences. The notion involves that the system of ideas is a structure. Each one of them implies a system of difference with the rest of ideas. To give an example, uh, Freud chose as a reference in philosophy, Parmenides and Aristotle, but I will get into that in a moment. In Lacan, the theory is a structure in the form that meaning the signifier. Uh, and you understand by signifier, signifier is the division that it, uh, initially Ferdinand de Saussure creates between the signified and the signifier meaning the meaning and the phonetic sound. And Lacanian reverse that, specifying that the, uh, the um, signifier, the phonetic sound takes precedent, is powerful, and is the logic of the unconscious. So as I was saying, 
I was saying that in Lacan theory, meaning, signifier, the other, are always on the structure. They are part of the structure of each subject. Language symbol is operating from the beginning. The subjective signification is already there. Uh, in uh, these uh, theories, it is impossible to cite a time which is previous to these categories. Uh, in other words, the subject begins in the place of the other. Um, you know, for example, we have a name chosen for, for us before we were born. We have expectations. What things are we, we are going to be good or bad? What, what, what is going to happen? Even before we are born, we are into the world of signifiers. Um, the other is present each time the unconscious opens up. The idea of the unconscious opens and closes in Lacan. You, you will see in a moment. I, I will explain that in detail. About the jouissance, which is the word for enjoyment, but in the French conception entails also the idea of suffering. Suffering and enjoyment are not together, tied, tied together like in the nut. This idea of jouissance, for example, is only possible to talk of it as something related with the origin of the signifier. There is no other origin than the origin of the discourse. So we have granted that every knowledge comes from other knowledges. Let's see Lacan and Freud, how they compare each other. Lacan and Freud had their philosophical, epistemological, and supporting science. Those are the reference I will refer today. Freud, Parmenides. The being is, and the not being is not. Lacan took Heraclitus. One enters and not enters the same river twice, because we are not, because we are not the same. Aristotle. Sensible experience comes first for Freud. Lacan chose Plato. First, the idea of form. Whatever is the idea is abstract and intellectual. Freud chose Schopenhauer, the world as will and representation. Um, the, the idea of trace, triad, or the will that Freud speaks comes from Schopenhauer versus Lacan chose Hegel, the desires of man is the desire of the other. All what is real is rational. Um, regarding epistemology, we have Freud is influenced by the inductivism, the English inductivism. First, the experience. And I noticed that maybe in the States, we have this idea uh, of, ex of science associated with an empirical way only. But there are other sciences. Lacan, for example, used hypothetical deductivism. First, the hypothesis. Because uh, to have one experience, something must establish that as experience. If we consider something unusual, for example, that behavior is rather unusual, we have to have a consensus, a, a hypothesis, a previous hypothesis that something doesn't conform certain norm and is unusual. Um, I will provide now some quotes. Lacan said, to tell the truth, Plato was Lacanian. Parmenides was wrong and Heraclitus was right. Lacanian, Lacan uh, addressing the psychoanalysts in England, uh, where the association actually expelled him, Lacan said, it is crucial that some, something of the signifier resonates. One is surprised 
that nothing of that sort has called the attention of the English philosophers. I call them philosophers because they are not psychoanalysts. They think that the world has no effect. They imagine that they are drives. Uh, for Lacan, you see, the drives are the echo that in the body that there is a discourse, that there is a saying. And I repeat, this is Lacan on seminar um, 23. Uh, for Lacan, the drives are the echo in the body of the fact that there is a discourse, there is a saying. Uh, I see here uh, the chat. Um, ah, okay, okay. I, I cannot, I will answer questions later or, or let me know if there is a question or something. Uh, but I will go through the end and we can engage on some interchange or comments. I'm going to go to the supporting science. Um, for uh, Freud, who is a positivist, he has biology as the paradigm. Also, Freud participates in a movement called Newtonism. There was uh, many authors, and Freud got the prize for being a representative of the Newtonism. Uh, Lacan, however, as opposing to this, created a new field of science. He named that conjectural sciences. These were for the quadrivium for Lacan were these four uh, disciplines, symbolic logic, theoretical physics, mathematics, and structural linguistics. If we admit them as science, because some people argue that some uh, writings on, on mathematics or symbolic logic are not science because of the lack of experiment, you see, or theoretical physics. However, all what Einstein produced was from a theoretical point of view. Uh, but if we admit them as sciences, then psychoanalysis is a science. I mentioned something about Thomas Kuhn, about the paradigms be between the two, the two authors, between Freud and Lacan. And I think it would be a great idea to see a little bit about him. I will just refresh if somebody is not familiar. Uh, Kuhn made several claims concerning the progress of scientific knowledge. Uh, he says that scientific fields undergo periodic paradigm shift, a paradigm shift, rather than solidly progressing in a linear way and continuous way. And these paradigm shifts open up new approaches to understand it what scientists would never have considered valid before. And that the notion of scientific truth at any given moment cannot be established solely, solely by objective criteria, but is defined by a consensus of a scientific community. Competing paradigms are frequently unconventional. That is, they are competing and are re irreconcilable accounts of reality. Thus, our comprehension of science can never really wholly upon objectivity alone. Science must account for subjective perspective as well, since all objective conclusions and ultimately founded upon the subjective condition, conditioning worldview of its researchers and participants. This is to complement the idea of the concept of science and why the claim that psychoanalysis is a science, Lacan suggested several times in his writings. 
he only said one time in a whole conference in Baltimore in 1966 that, like, and this is the only one that most of psychoanalysts remember. They say psychoanalysis is not a science because Lacan said so. But Lacan said that referring to if proper concept, if proper concept of science is the science, then psychoanalysis is not a science. But as you can see, philosophy of science has different angles. Thomas Kuhn being a very, very one that has great influence in, in the States and, and the whole world, and even today. Let's go now into Lacanian and the body, one of the things that are important. Um, Lacan had a fascinating and peculiar position about the body. He says the body is imaginary. You know that Lacan has the three realms, symbolic, re imaginary, and uh, real. And according to Lacan, the body belongs to the realm of the imaginary. That means that for the speaking being, the body is a deception. Lacan presents this idea in 1953 and also in 1980. In Freud, we see an evolution from autoerotism to alloerotism. For him, the first thing the libido recovers is our own body. In Freud, there is no way to love the neighbor because every neighbor is a substitute of our own body. This own body is in Freud's theory, the ego, as a libidinal object. This one, the ego, and the first libidinal object is also the sum of all the pleasures, while any experience of dissatisfaction will be a non-ego. This is the way that Freud conceives the inner and outer world. What is me and what is not me? The subject is a closed surface, Freud, whose nucleus is the ego. In this theory, love does not exist because the true love is for myself and my own body. And that would be the true of love. In other words, to obtain the satisfaction of my drives that I have within me. I need sometimes to obtain them through somebody else's body. The deception for Freud is in the object. I should say that I'm comparing theories. I'm not saying one is better than the other. I am myself endowed to Freud as to many authors. And I'm just uh, only trying to make a case of the confusion of talking Lacan in Freudian terms. That's why I make the emphasis. In Lacan, uh, regarding this idea of the body, the, th the theory is exactly the opposite. The ego builds itself departing from the image of the neighbor. The only truth is the image of the neighbor. This identification is essentially deceiving. That's why Lacan used that famous rainbow uh, phrase, the ego is the other, or je, je un autre, while for Freud, the other is always me. For Lacan, I am other. As a result of this mirroring dialectic, we have the rivalry rather than love for the other. In this text, the aggression in psychoanalysis, Slacan states, who, if not us, will challenge the notion of the objective statute of the ego that in the history of our culture is confused with the subject? And I repeat, uh, because uh, the relation with, with the other entails rivalry. In the text of Psychoanalysis and Aggression, uh, Lacan said, I repeat, who, if not us, will challenge the notion of the objective 
a statute of the ego that in the history of our culture is confused with the subject. Lacan, for example, in his seminary, number 23, he says about our own body, he states, one has a body, in no case, one is it. He always, he's establishing the problem of being. That's why Lacan is related to an anti, anti ontology, which is in itself a huge chapter, which I hope to present to you someday. But the idea here is that because we are with the idea of being the body, then we suffer the body because the body is ourselves. This is what is a state in our culture. Men, mankind, mean by men, I mean mankind, is captured by the image of his body. As we established before in the mirror stage, the man was captured by the image of his neighbor. Later, Lacan also presents another perspective to the same problem by saying that man is captured by the image of his body. I think the word man is used very broadly. We, we, should, we should say that Lacan referred that for our culture is this way. I, I don't know if for every culture is that way. So I wish I can convey so the deceit. The deceit is, is visual, it's a scopic. Therefore, intangible, acquire weight in that way. We suppose it's something that has a weight, the body, but that statute of state of things is given by the gaze. So the weight is deceiving. If a patient comes and says, uh, oh, doctor, oh, I, I, am, I cannot live with my life. I, I really won 25 pounds. Uh, if I refer to the real, uh, understanding the real in that connotation, it would not, it wouldn't be Lacanian. Reality is different from real. From re for Lacan, real is the logical, the impossible, is that which defies the symbolic, uh, which defines language defies because cannot be defined, is beyond, and is a mathematical impossibility. That's the concept of the real. So if I take the Lacanian answer, would that be, uh, why do you think you want 20, 25 pounds? What, what does it make you think that? In, in, instead of acknowledging, saying, hey, have, what have you eat? Or I can see that you are, uh, fat or whatever, uh, in other words, in the more polite words. I'm, what I'm saying is that the statue of reality comes from the gaze regarding the body. And beyond that is more than that. The structure, it's like an quotation, the structure is the real which shines out in language. So the real is perceived through the symbolic world, through language. The structure is the real. And that's one of the reasons, you know, I play Bach for you. I play Bach because his music is wonderful. But one of the things, and I don't know if I have time to address tonight the uh, musical subject, which is one of my topics, I specialize on that, uh, is because of the structure. Uh, the music of Bach, any music, uh, but in particular Bach music has this powerful uh, in, uh, effect by its structure. Uh, Lacan says the structure is the real and not the stone or the bone. In other words, the tangible. This is an illusion to those who speaks of the body as real or a jouissance as the bone of the subject. Some schools of psychoanalysis 
they think the real is the body and the bone. So like I'm, I'm just bringing Lacanian uh, quotations in order to challenge that notion. One of the key points of the study, this study is to establish that for Lacan, the fundamental organ of the body is language. Rather than the Newtonian principles so present in Freud's theory of forces, the theory of thermodynamics, etc., we can appreciate a theory closer to current physics. Lacan said in seminar four that, quotation, energy is not determined or constant. The signifiers determine the amount of energy. While for Freud there were fields of energy in conflict, for Lacan is the dimension of the discourse. And this dimension is regulated by logic, the logic of the signifier. For Lacan, there is no psychic forces, nor psychic apparatus. There is no tridimensional materiality in the discourse. His theory of the unconscious differentiates subject from the individual. When you talk about person, you are talking about a persona with civil rights, that's a person in society. When you're talking about ourselves, usually we refer as individual. Well, this does my test. I am me. This is the common idea. For Lacan, we are born divide, divide by this unconscious. And not only with unconscious, but in, in mix, Lacan created neologism. Uh, the neologism was in mixture of otherness also presented in, in the States, in the Baltimore conference in 1966. So the Lacanian subject is always considered in admission of otherness. Well, because I mentioned the unconscious, let's talk about the unconscious, the concept of unconscious for Lacan and the unconscious in Freud. If you pay attention to my words, I'm, I'm, I already presenting a difference in the title. For uh, Freud, the unconscious was a topic place and a psychic structure. For Lacan, it's a concept, like uh, the ellipt elliptical concept of Kepler to understand the universe. It's a concept, not a thing that is tangible. And I will compare today, just to make it brief, I will, it's, it's a very complicated issue and I have a long paper on, on the unconscious, but today I'm going to present uh, the unconscious of uh, Lacan and Freud based upon the comparison of, of space, unconscious and space. Uh, Freud, if we consider his theory from the macro space, considers the unconscious as the sun in the center, following Copernicus as his notion of heliocentrism, a central, central point on the space. The reference for space in Freudian is Euclidean space. The position of the analyst in this setup is similar to an archaeologist, an archaeologist who must look, search the depths of the earth. Well, the psychoanalyst in, this, in the Freudian way must search the depths of the mind. The Freudian unconscious is based in a topic. Topic, remember he presents two topics and from topos, topos, place. In his view, it has three dimensions and is an internal, is positioned below in the deepest part of our psychic apparatus. It's that part of our self that we know less about it. It is differentiated between the conscious and I cite Freud now, now as a torque in the obscurity of the deepest of psychologists. This is Freud and Ego and the Eve, 1923. 
So the unconscious is conceived as a water well and belongs to each one of us as individuals. I have my unconscious, you have your unconscious, everybody has his, her unconscious. Later in the second topic, Freud presents the ego as, as an egg, the figure of an egg, spherical, closed, an internal part of ourselves. And this time he presents the ego as the most profound part of our being. In 1937, in his book, Analysis, Terminable and Interminable, Freud tells us about the unconscious is related with the id and with the organic body. The core of our self would be there. So we can see now the notion of internal versus external and biology is taken as the science to follow, as the paradigm. In Lacan, regarding the space, I claim that he takes a Kepler model of thought with his concept, his concept of the elliptical motion, which implies the idea that there is no center. What we have in this model are two spotlights in one at once. The sun for one point and in the other nothingness. The unconscious in Lacan is articulated with the Moebius strip. The idea is that the unconscious opens and closes. And I will ask you a favor, Michael, if you would be so kind to show our audience. Uh, I brought a Moebius strip. Uh, as you can see, this is the topological model. Lacan used that to represent uh, the idea of the unconscious at open up and uh, and close them, also to show that it has an edge and this bi-dimensional. I will talk about the, this in a moment with a little more details, but I wanted to show you that while Freud has an egg, Lacan brought from topology the uh, Moebius strip. strip. Uh, the Moebius strip as a way to represent the subject of the unconscious. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. Uh, so the idea is that uh, the unconscious in Lacan is articulate with the Moebius strip. Uh, the, the most fundamental point is that the unconscious circulates between the analyst and the analysant. You know, in psychoanalysis in Lacanian, we don't call patient or client, or we call the analysant because there is a dialectic relationship between the analysant and the analyst. And the idea is that the unconscious circulates between the analyst and the analysant in, in mixture of otherness. Lacan used the concept of the Moebius band to articulate the concept of the unconscious. So this Moebius strip gives an account of the structure of the subject as an effect of the signifier. Quotes, and you will see perhaps now the opposition with some of the Freudian statements. There is nothing more profound than the surface. The Moebius strip is a bi is a bidirectional surface, bidirectional surface, because there is no depth. The Lacanian subject inhabits only in two dimensions, like the discourse. Think, for example, if you have to think the space between the ocean and the air. What is the ocean and the air? That not the space. That would be an idea to to emulate in the tridimensional world an idea of the Moebius strip. But regarding that surface in topology is submersible, which means it's submersible into the tridimensional space. It is unilateral. It has one side, although they appear to be two. 
open and with a single edge is limited, limit a surface, but that's not enclosed. There is no exterior interior. The idea is that each analysand implies a particular condition. And as you saw, the Moelian strip, of course, is a topological space, not a Euclidean one. It's a concept. One feature of the Moebius strip is that if we do a tour over it, and I'll show it one more time without just asking, perhaps you can see it here. If you make a tour of it and you start the tour, you are going to finish at the same point that you started. If you follow that, you are going to finish at the same point only in an inverted position. Uh, this gives an account of the subject of the unconscious in the sense that, for example, in analysis, if all goes well, the analysis will finish the analysis in an inverted position. The signifiers slide through the Moebius strip. Lacan used to say that in an analysis, it's necessary to achieve two detours, two tours around the trip to achieve a new position, a new subjective position. Because the idea is that the issue, the subject, when we call the subject, we are not calling the subject like in anthropology, just to call the man and the woman together and not call men. That's anthropology. When we say subject in psychoanalysis, we are talking about the device subject. But furthermore, is this idea that uh, is a subject of the unconscious. And if an analysis works well, it means that the subjective position has changed and the subject is subject as the matter, what's the matter, what's the subject? For example, what, which subject do you take in high school or at university? Do you take geometry? Well, the subject brings the subject, which is going to be resolved in the discourse. And by doing so, the subject will finish in a new position if everything goes well. So the beginning Marcelo, is... Sorry. Yes? Sorry, I have a question really quick. Uh, sorry for interrupting you. So if the, if the, if the analyst, uh, uh, after knowing, after learning, after walking the path, gets into the, gets into the opposite um, place where it was at the beginning. That means that it can turn in the analyst or, you know, in, in more, more new, like in Gestalt theory, that they said that, it, the, that people uh, gain into the self-sustainability or something around those lines? Well, Thank you for the question first. I, I love questions. It's, it's, it's <laughs> talking, it's, it has a lot of energy. So I, I welcome questions. And in particular, this one is very interesting. While I'm not an expert on Gestalt, I study Gestalt, the Gestalt. The Gestalt always implies two, like in many, many theories, and I would say most theories, implies two positions. Mm -hmm. you, you have the analyst and you have the patient. Uh -huh. You have the two sides. When I refer that the subject goes in, in a way through the Moebius strip, it's a mixture of the discourse that the analyst and the subject create together. It's not totally together. You cannot separate the subject from the analyst nor from the uh, analysant. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's the reason that in psychoanalysis, for example, some people used to say, at the beginning, at the early stages of Lacan uh, talk. And after half an hour, the analyst says, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. 
and then charge $200 or $500 in Fire Avenue, New York, and you yeah. hear, uh-huh. And after two years of, uh-huh, you get, oh, yeah, he said, uh-huh, in a more different term, in a more different tone. No, no, no. The idea is that this course is built upon the interaction between the discourse of the analyst and the discourse of the analyst. Of course, the discourse of the analyst is only as to re a reflection. The analyst as a person is totally erased from the, from the, from the equation. Mm -hmm. As a person, the analyst is totally erased. It doesn't go, he's not as a person. He occupies what Lacan describes the position of the object A. Uh, which has to do with the discourses, which another time I will bring, but to, to say it briefly, is a position in which personally has nothing to do, it involves into the, into the discourse of the analysis and it goes together. They are partners on that journey through mm -hmm. the Moebius Street that hopefully will finish up in a, in a different position of suffering, in an, an inverted position that of the suffering that the analysis and brought to the session. Ah, okay, okay, I understand now. I understand. Thank you, thank you. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, and, and not only that, Lacan said that it's necessary two tours around the trip. The beginning and the end uh, is the, the beginning is the end, but the sliding of the structure has changed. Uh, and he says, the signifiers is of Moivian structure. The signifier is of Moivian structure. It is over the same side or face, right or left. That's the material, that's uh, that the material is found. So we found the material for the interpretation in the signifier that takes right, left terms. There is no primacy like many Lacanians, like Miller said, there is a master uh, that we have to discover the master signifier, which is the problem, the master signifier. No, the idea of S S1 as the signifier master goes to S2 is dialectical. S2 influence S, 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 S1. And if we have more signifiers on the change, S3 can change totally the position of, H, of S1. So uh, intrinsically, this idea the, the signifier it, itself has a Moivian structure in the sense of a tour that goes through its own discourse. And at this point, since the, the question has been great to put this, this matter, uh, we should consider what is the end of the session in, in Lacanian psychoanalysis, which is called the cat. The cat, the cat. Uh, so, the idea is that the cut the analyst produces through an intervention creates a new surface. Lacan says, quotation, through the cut of the signifier, which is operated in the intervention, a new surface arises, which reveals the appearance of a new textual subject. I said again, through the cut of the signifier, which is uh, operated in the intervention, the analyst intervention, a new surface arises, which reveal the appearance of a new textual subject. As you can see, even though we say hello, we might embrace our patient. Uh, for Lacan, the core of the issue is on the text and, this, and the symbolic, is what is going to produce changes on life of people. Life change on the text, and then will change on the gestures, on the, those called affects, and those called attitudes to life. The core of the matter is the text. In relation to the cut of the signifier, Lacan says, only psychoanalysis would reveal that there is a reverse of the discourse. By saying the reverse of the discourse, I already, he's already implying the structure of the Moelian strip. Only under the condition of the cut of the signifier and its interpretation. 
Lacan says that on Radiophony 1970. Uh, the unconscious and the discourse. Some Lacanian quotes. I give you a couple of Lacanians so you perhaps believe him <laughs> more than my words. Um, although I'm making an effort to make it very understandable for everybody, this complex theory. Uh, Lacanian said, for example, the, this, the unconscious is a discourse, discursive fact that stands in the place of the other is not inside anyone. How different from Freud? And also, do you, do, do you notice that this take us into, I don't wanna get into because it's a topic that is, is worse than the, the abortion. It's, it's, it's the individual responsibility. Many uh, therapists will say, well, you have a pleasure. Of it. What is, why do you do that? You, you might have some pleasure on it. You, it. It's your fault. In other words, you are suffering you are paying to me to help you, and it's your fault. And uh, Lacan says opposite than that, the unconscious is not inside. If the unconscious is not inside anyone, a person is not responsible. That doesn't mean that the person commit a crime as a persona has to go to court, has to go to a judge, and has to, that's, this is different. But in a subjective way, we are saying that a subject is not responsible because the, 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 the unconscious is the knowledge not known, according to Lacan. And if he doesn't know, how can he be responsible? Um, about the unconscious, Lacan in Baltimore said, it is about the subject that speaks. The subject should never be represented anywhere. For Freud was about repression. The repression is all about repression. But Lacan's, for Lacan, there is a dynamic that the uh, unconscious opens up and closes up. And regarding that opening and closing, in his seminar, in the class of uh, number five, seminar 11, 1954, Lacan said, then you will understand why I told you about the unconscious as something that opens and closes because its essence is to mark the time when by being born with the signifier, the subject is born divided. I said it again. Then you will understand why I told you about the unconscious as something that opens and closes, because its essence is to mark the time when by being born with the signifier, the subject is born divide. The unconscious is what it is, is that opening that speaks. The idea of an unconscious as opening that speaks. For those psychoanalysts, if there are anybody there, uh, uh, analysts, I would like to say that if you're familiar with the graph of the sire, Lacan graph of the sire, which is a graph, Lacan used to use mathematical graphs to explain theories. I, I found that this, the elaboration that best respond to the structure of the, of the unconscious. Why? Because in the graph, the, the word unconscious is not written. The unconscious also has a pulsation and that has to do with the session of the time. You know, one of the problems Lacan faced was that his session sometimes became too short. Maybe you have to be Lacan to do that. You can charge a lot of money and after two minutes saying, aha, uh -huh, this is what you have to say, session, see you next time. Uh, I guess you have to be Lacan to do that. But the, the idea or the notion behind that is that the opening and the close, the cut has to be clear when the openings and close. So the analyst knows exactly what to reflect. Why the analyst create a cut there? 
why that it happened and what changes after that. So the time of the session is variable because of this conception. In this way, we talk about an unconscious that has an entrance, a hiatus, a beat or pulsation and a closing. For Freud was repression. For Lacan is a, a concept of the unconscious has an entrance, a hiatus, a beat or pulsation and a closing. And in order, I will uh, give you some uh, uh, quotes. Um, Lacan said, the place of the matter is the entrance to the cave, to which is well known that Plato guide us to the exit. Plato guide us to the light, while one could imagine to see the analyst going in. And he says, things are not so easy because it is an entrance to which one can never arrive, but in the moment in which is closing. Lacan says, this will never be a touristic place um, because of the only way to enter so that it opens is to call from inside. I, I, I will say it again. Uh, Lacan said, things are not so easy because it is an entrance to the unconscious, to which one can never arrive, but in the moment in which is closing. This will never be a touristic place. And because the only way to enter so that it opens is to call from inside. Yatus, pulsation, alternation of suction to follow certain indications of Freud. That is what we have to account for, like I said. And to that end, we have proceed to found it in a, in a topology. We have proceed to found, found like a foundation. We have proceed to make the foundation of it in topology. And I repeat, hiatus, pulsation, alternation of suction to follow certain indication of Freud. That is what we have to give an account. And to that end, we have proceeded to found it in a topology. The structure of what is closed is in fact inscribed in a geometry where a space is reduced to a combinatorial one. It is properly what is called an edge. Do you see that in this model, I've, I've been talking about the unconscious for a while, there is no castration, There's, there is no Oedipal complex, there is no psychic apparatus or complex of masculinity. There are no meanings, no sense. This unconscious is regulated by a different logic, that of the signifier. To finish today, I will refer to the neologism Lacan introduced in Baltimore, what I called before the emission of otherness. This idea of that the analysis involves an emission of otherness. To, for example, if you ask, go to a Starbucks and says coffee with a muffin cake, with a lemon cake. They bring you both and you, you can say, I don't want the lemon cake, please take it back. Now, imagine that you ask a coffee with sugar. You said, bring me a coffee with three sugars inside. And when they bring to you the coffee, you cannot say to the waiter, listen, I don't want the sugar, take it out. Because the sugar and the water has in mixing in a way that there is only one product, coffee with sugar. And the idea, I'm trying to come up with some maybe silly way to show this conception of, of the analyst and the analysant in, in a way that is undissolved and in mixture of otherness. And I will quote Dr. Einstein, the, the uh, psychoanalyst I referred at the beginning in his seminar of 2001 in Buenos Aires. He says, each time we operate with the subject, we should consider which is the dimension of otherness that allow us to access to him. But even 
if it allows to access the subject, we never really access the subject as such, always with the condition sine qua non that is in mixture with otherness. The ethics I propose to develop is precisely that. It is an ethic that says not to consider in psychoanalysis the subject without the otherness. When the patient comes, the teenager, and he says, well, I'm, I don't wanna do anything because I don't want, my mom wants me to do medicine, my wants me to do, my mom wants me to study. And the analyst says, okay, okay, that's your mom that's one, that's your dad who wants you to be a lawyer, but what do you want? What exactly is that you want? And a, a Lacanian psychoanalyst wouldn't do that because the patient comes with all these courses, the discourse of the father, the mother, discourses that even before was born, discourses that belong to grand, grandparents who are not even alive. So the complexity of the subject is the complexity of these courses. And to take the subject is to take the discourse as a general discourse to unfold in the shape of the tour of a Moabian strip. So the subject there, I, I repeat the last part of what our, our Dr. Einstein said, the ethics I propose to develop is precisely that, an ethic that says no to considering psychoanalysis the subject without otherness. The subject without otherness is called the individual. According to him, much of the problems of Western civilization uh, is the idea of the individual. Um, but that is, is, is a position that it takes a long time to develop. Uh, I'm just mentioned that there is a clear division between what is the individual and what is the subject. And the person in a psychoanalysis is a subject. Lacan in a seminar too, for example, referring to uh, Freud's Irma dream. I don't know if you remember, was a dream that Freud had. He felt very guilty about it. But Lacan says, this dream reveals to us what is at stake. It is the, in the function of the dream is found beyond the ego. What is the subject and what is not of the subject? This is the unconscious. Like in Heraclitus, is and is not. Unconscious opens, unconscious close. Unconscious is, unconscious is not. Bach music could mean for you a world, or maybe just noise that you hate and you don't, uh, it, it happens or it doesn't. So I think we can see the mixture of otherness as a mixture of two things that cannot be separated. There is no subject if the emission of otherness does not take place. And to finish today, just to finish, I brought you today a few, I wanna read to you a, a chart, comparison, what I said about the unconscious on Freud and Lacan. It's just a chart. So we said for Freud, uh, the unconscious is tridimensional. It has a space in the psychic apparatus is a topos, it has a topic. For Lacanian, it's a topological space. And so, so, uh, Lacanian has used many topological uh, figures. I show you today one, uh, which is the uh, uh, Moebius strip. To, to refer to the unconscious, Lacan refers to the subject as the torus, the, the topological figure as a torus. And Lacan used many, many, ideas and then Lacanian will go on and use the, uh, uh, the Borromean knots in order to understand the structure of the subject, which will bring another issue of mathematics, but it's and that's for another time. I continue. Then for Freud, the, the, the unconscious is internal, below individual, is in the deep, deep, in the depth of our being. For Lacanian is the surface between the subject and the other. For Freud, the model of the individual is an egg. For Lacan, it's a Moebius strip. For Freud, the unconscious is based on the repression. 
for Lacan is open, close, hiatus, pulsation. And he called the unconscious the knowledge not known, the knowledge that we don't know. For Freud was make conscious what is unconscious, the whole idea for Freud. And this could be a great therapy. I'm not criticizing Freud. Again, what I try to make a point tonight is making a difference with Lacan to make Lacan an author by itself. For Freud to make conscious what is unconscious. But for Lacan is the cat reveals the surface of a new subject appears, a new textual subject. For Freud, the unconscious definitely is. For Lacan, the unconscious, like in Heraclitus, is and is not. Lacan refers to an anti-ontology. Anti Okie dokie, this is what I brought today and it's been my pleasure and thank you for listening to me. Uh, I welcome if you have comment, questions, observations, critics, uh, uh, anything that could uh, be of an addition to this talk tonight. I don't know, Michael, if you want to ask or, or if they come as a text or people talk. Sure, yep. If you want to, you can uh, put, your, uh, put your question down in the chat box and I can read it out. Or you can just unmute yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have a couple of questions. Um, uh, and as I said, I didn't want to interrupt you before, Marcelo. Uh, but um, my first question is, when you were talking, when you were comparing, of course, Freud and Lacan at the beginning, when you were talking about the conjectural sciences, and then you mentioned before the symbolic logic, the theoretical physics, the mathematical and structural um, linguistics versus, you said versus in Freud, the Newtonism. I am not very familiar with with the Newtonism from the perspective of Freud. Can you share a little bit on that? Well, Freud always went. Uh, Freud was contemporary of of Einstein, mm -hmm. and Freud specifically specifically talks about about. Uh, he was doubtful that the contradictions of that. Freud always went for the for the logic of. Uh, Newton, and he also used the Euclidean space to understand Newton as he used biology and the, the, the place of common sense, the idea of forces, the idea of the force of the energy. The, for example, the concept of energy is a Newtonian concept on Freud. The forces inside the psychic individual, the forces that are the libidinal forces that are within us fighting against each other are taken from the model of Newton. For, mm -hmm. for Lacan, it's different. For Lacan, energy is, it has a different statue. Lacan will take the, the concept of energy from Einstein. OK, thank you. Thank you, I understand. Great. And thanks for asking. <laughs> um, I have a question about um, the, the cut. Uh, uh, so in in Lacan, the um, the structure or the technique would be to wait for an opening, wait for a closing, and then to cut. Um, and then by doing so, you see you see a different subjective surface. Um, and now I I think that the um, the challenge that Deleuze and Guattari bring to that is that when the when the cut happens, it determines what the signifier is. Like if you make the cut at different points, then the uh, then the signifier changes much in the same way that like if you if you add more signifiers to the, the chain, then it changes the the first. Uh, now that's a real like I'm really having <laughs> a difficult time because they both both Deleuze and Guattari and Lacan are talking about cuts and I'm wondering how how similar their conceptions are or not. 
Well, I think what you just described is Lacanian way to conceive the cat, if I understood you. Uh, you mentioned the cat as a place where the cat will create a dimension of the signifier because it, it will create a meaning. And by the way, the cat is not just the cat, it's also an interpretation. Right. It's, not just, it's not just saying to the, to the analysis, see you next time, but it's also to intervene, the intervention, the, as I mentioned, for example, uh, somebody talking about the problem with the weight, I cannot, I gain too weight, I, I weigh 200 pounds, I despise myself. And one question from the common sense is, have you tried any diet? Do you take Coca-Cola? That would be from the common sense and perhaps a stupid sense inside the session. The guy can ask that to a friend. Uh, but a Lacanian could add, um, what is your conception of uh, weight? Um, who has weight in your family? Uh, is there a weight in your shoulders that something that you think is extra pounds that are emotional? Uh, I'm just coming up with different cuts yeah. in the moment. It will depend on the context and the signifiers that the analysis uses. Because the idea for the other, the analyst usually uh, tends to reflect uh, the signifiers of the analysis in a reverse position. The analyst, the, anal the, ana the analyst is like a mirror and tends to create significations over that. Mm -hmm. But also in a case, for example, imagine uh, that, imagine a case in which somebody uh, doesn't know why he does it. He's on the streets and he's a, a drunk alcoholic. Uh, but after questioning, doing the right questions, you real, they realize, the analyst and then the analyst, that he actually doesn't even like drinking. He, does not, he doesn't know why he do, he do it. He doesn't know why he does it. So um, this type of questioning will be a cut in the sense of creating a new, a new signification, a new questioning. Hmm. That, that, that really, really helps. Yes, thank you. Sure, great. Yeah. Thank you, Michael, for your question. Somebody else was saying a question on the chat, but I, I, I don't know if you can. Oh, yes, let's see. Um, I'm, I'm gonna get this name wrong, I'm sure, Irene. Uh, Braca Ettinger, psychoanalyst and artist, studied with Lacan and has written that in her conversations with him, he claimed he did not um, go far enough with his theory on the body. Um, insights on this? Well, I, I would say that Lacan closed his school uh, because he thought he was, his teaching was a failure. You have most of his direct disciples, Colette Soler, for example, say that, or like even somebody so, so, uh, that I like so much, like Shishek, they say, enjoy the symptom. The, the symptom is you, because you cannot deal with it, just love it, and in a Freudian way, make a unity with that. Uh, Lacan, uh, this is what I'm, wh why I'm doing this. I think uh, Dr. Einstein has created a group of investigation for many years. It has places in many uh, countries in the world where the conception of the body of Lacan is trying to be read in a different way. Uh, I think Lacan had trouble to make uh, to make himself uh, understood by his own disciples uh, in, in the times of his seminars. He always, even though he was extremely famous, his decree has been published on many languages, even Japanese, Lacan considered himself a failure in his teaching. He said, I'm learning from my students. And eventually he closed the school when he saw the, he saw the misunderstandings. And many books, uh, Michael, for example, he refers to the one that you are reading, anti uh, uh, So as, as, as many ways to misread what he tried to say. 
So yes, I would say so, but I, I cannot claim that I have the truth, of course. I belong to a group of uh, people who take psychoanalysis in a way, in a, science, a scientific group as presented as, as I mentioned, Kuhn concept. And we developed and study, and we discovered that Lacanian uh, writings has a lot of things that for some reason has escaped the attention of many, that for some reason, some says about the body are repeat and repeat over and over. For example, the word uh, Lacan says in his last seminary, I'm Freudian, you can be Lacanian if you want, but I'm Freudian. And Lacan said on the same seminary in the, in the next paragraph, but nobody cites him that I have a debate with, with Freud that has long, long overdue debate with Freud, but nobody says those phrases. So yes, I will say that many of the conceptions of the body of Lacan has not been read uh, faithfully to the text of Lacan, uh, but that's my position uh, along with many people, uh, but it's not the position. Some other psychoanalysts consider the real, that the body is the real. And the problem with me is when they try to make Lacan say that. If Miller would like to say the body is the real, go ahead, do, please do so, but do not make Lacan say, say what he didn't. That would be the question. Marcella, I just want to say thank you, first of all, for, for playing for us, and, and secondly, for um, an experience in which I was adrift for about halfway through at least, and then it started to come together for me what you were saying, and, and, and sort of you, you created a structure for me to start to think. And so now I'm in this position of having started to think. You made a cut, right? <laughs> so now I'm in this position of starting to think. So, so where do I go from here? I've, I've tried to enter into Lacanian thought several times, failed utterly. It, it just seemed impenetrable. And now I want to try it again. Where should I start? What should I do? Well, you can try it, for example, do you read French? No, unfortunately, I don't. Okay, do you, neither Spanish, right? No, neither Spanish, no. Well, you can try to start by reading Lacan on the seminars that are published. The problem that in English, they are published the translation of Miller, which has many cuts. For example, all the topological, mathematical places that Lacan developed, they are cut from, the, from, the, uh, mm. from that version. But it's a good place to start understanding uh, the Lacan's uh, uh, readings. Uh, it will be an insight into Lacan that you should know though, that um, you should start trying to find a way to, to uh, perhaps get a translation of uh, Lacan's uh, French uh, seminars, or even in Spanish, uh, Rodriguez Ponte has, is, is working. And I know my, uh, the, I belong to a, a, a scientific association, which is called APOLA, which is making uh, APOLA, A-P-O-L-A, is a, a, a association for other Lacan. And Rodriguez Ponte is being translated as I speak into Portuguese and I think in English. If you happen to go by any Rodriguez Ponte trans transcriptions, you will see that uh, you will have a very clear insight. Lacanian is much more clear in his versions because there are no cuts and the paragraph has not changed the order like Miller did. Hmm. Okay. Right, and then listen to, a lot, listen to a lot of uh, talks. Uh, I do present a lot of lectures and I'll be I always oh, happy I, to... I will be on the lookout. I will be on the lookout. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. And for mentioning my music. Thank you so much, which is part of my life too. <laughs> Great part. 
somebody else. I, I don't know. There is another. Uh, oh, okay. No, no. There were just clarifications of your questions. I think we are about the time. Uh, but this is Michael. What do you think? Um, if anyone else has a burning question, please go ahead. But uh, that would be the last one. And if no one does, then we can sign off. Again, my thanks for the invitation, Michael. I love the Young Center and the people. I've been there a couple of times and I, I hope to come back. Is uh, Thank you for having me. Um, my, my regards, warmest regards to everybody there and to the audience tonight to, to listen to my music and to my uh, lecture. Thank you, Marcelo. And you've definitely lit a fire here, I think. We're, we're ready to have you back, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Marcelo. And of course, Michael, thank you. And thank you, everyone. It was a great, great enriching conversation. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.